is when the teacher is either well too bored, well too 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 lazy or uh, uh, too bored to do anything else, and and just puts a, a film at the end of, on a Friday afternoon or um, at the end of a at the end of a course. Uh, there's there's no real preparation. There's no pre watching. The, the, there's no real watching uh, while watching tasks, and there's very little uh, follow up or, or feedback. It's a little bit like uh, giving students uh, whole texts to read in, in an hour and a half, just giving them the text to read without explaining any vocabulary, without doing any activities, asking them to read the texts, read a book for, for 90 minutes and taking it back in. We wouldn't do that with a visual text, but it's still quite prevalent in language teaching that this happens, the film is put on for 90 minutes and that the, uh, the, 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 there's very little activities, very few pre-watching activities, while watching and post watching activities, so it's not it's not really uh, pedagogically sound to do this, and it does seem to be it's quite still quite pre prevalent. Um, we also a quote here that not, not only is it it's not only unethical but it's also illegal. We we can show films in the classroom uh, if it's for an educational purpose. But if it's just to entertain the students at the end of the term on a Friday, it's 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 illegal as well. Um, the other approach is the the extreme opposite of this approach, and it, in this approach, uh, the the it's called the do the film to death approach, and in this uh, approach, the teacher gives the students lots and lots of worksheets uh, which the students have to complete while they're watching the film, and nearly nearly all of the activities are, are linguistic activities and mainly grammar activities and lots of fill the gap activities which students have to complete while they're watching the film. But it's it's obviously it's very very difficult to watch a film and to and to complete uh, uh, a task at the same time. Uh, and it, this t type of approach, stopping the film every couple of minutes and then doing work on grammar and, and gap fills, it, it's, it's not much fun. It takes away the fun and it's quite demotivating to the students. Um, a new approach uh, which, which has come up since the advent of the, the, uh, the internet and YouTube in particular is the let's watch a, a video on YouTube approach. It, this approach, again, the teacher hasn't really prepared the class. Uh, the teacher is, just finds a video during the class related to the theme that they're, they're studying and just puts on the video, but there's no pre-watching activities, no while-watching activities, very little follow-up on it. Um, or sometimes the teacher find something interesting before the class uh, and thinks it's, it's suitable because it's, it's beautiful or it's funny or it's interesting and just puts the film on. Um, but, but, but without any pedagogical goals, well, obviously this is not, not very sound. Um, so I think what, what we need to do is that we, we, we need to have um, um, pedagogically, pedagogically sound structured activities which engage the students. Um, and I think we need to have um, material that uh, has uh, linguistic activities, but also visual activities and cultural and intercultural activities, and also activities uh, which develop the 21st literacy skills that students need for the 21st century. Uh, I have a quote from Carmen Herrero, who's um, uh, a teacher in, in Manchester Metropolitan University, who's doing fantastic work on, on um, uh, film and language teaching. And uh, you know, just the the the, the quote here that, that that film um, can help develop the four communicative skills, and also we want activities which encourage students to learn the language in a, in, a, in a creative way and to engage the the, the learners. Um, we're just going to look now at, at using whole films. It's quite a lot of debate about whether we should use whole films in the classroom uh, or whether we should, should show film clips. Some people will argue that uh, films should be shown in, 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 one, in one sitting, um, in a darkened room. It's a work of art. This is the way the film director intended it to be shown, uh, and which I think is, you know, it, it, there is, you know, it has some justification. But um, other people would argue, and I would, I would agree that, that there tends to be cognitive overload um, uh, if we were show a whole film uh, in in one sitting, and it, it's it, it's a foreign language. After about ten minutes, it's probably you know, cognitive and information overload. Um, but if we do show a whole film in in one sitting, we need to 
prepare the students quite a lot. My own approach is that I prefer the students to watch the films at home. I give them film guides, which they run with the guides. There's work on linguistic, uh, the linguistic element, the visual element, the cultural element, and then for the, watch the film at home with English subtitles, and then come back to the class and watch um, short film clips. I think that's more optimal use of, 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 of class time. Um, if we do watch whole films, either inside or outside the classroom, I think that we need these pedagogically sound materials, which uh, have activities to develop linguistic, visual, cultural, and intercultural skills. Um, the film guides, I'm going to mention some film guides now, which I think uh, are, are very, very good and, and suitable for, for using with, uh, with students when they're going to watch whole films. Um, we have here Filter, which is the um, Film in Language Teaching Association. This was set up by Carmen Herrero, who I just mentioned before. And uh, this this is a, is a, actually a link. You just go to the, the filter. It's filter.org. And uh, you ask for an invitation. They send you an invitation. You join. Then you've got access to hundreds of film guides. Um, the, the, the film guides are, are very pedagogically sound, they're aesthetically pleasing. We have an example of one here. There's lots of activities, and um, the activities are de developing, you know, uh, vocabulary, grammar, but also the cultural and, and intercultural information. Um, the best film guides that I know for uh, teaching English uh, is are at uh, esl.notes, that's esl.notes. Uh, sorry, eslnotes.com, and what this is, this is a site run by two teachers in, in California, and they write really excellent uh, film guides, pedagogically sound film guides. There are about 300 guides. Uh, there are guides for um, contemporary and, and, and classic films. Um, and there are four main sections to the guide. The first is you have a description of the, of the, of the, main, of the main characters. You have a description of the main characters, which helps stu students understand. The second part, you have the um, uh, probably the most important part. So, the the something's happened with the presentation. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have the major characters here. The second part, you have a, a synopsis. Uh, and and uh, so you've got a summary of the film, which helps helps students. And then in the third part, this is probably the most important part. You have a glossary of about 20 pages of the most difficult expressions, the most difficult vocabulary. And there's lots of phrasal verbs, uh, colloquial expressions, which students the students read the guide beforehand. When they watch the film with English subtitles, it helps them understand as, as, as they've already encountered the most difficult vocabulary and expressions. Really excellent. And then, and then the fourth part, the discussion questions, so students are communicating, talking about the film uh, as well. Um, another uh, excellent website for, for Film Gun Club. Uh, film Club is a, a, a charity which is set up in the UK to promote film education in British schools. Uh, this is the, the, the website. Uh, it's filmclub.com. It's um, a very, very successful um, organization. They've got film clubs in about 7,000 British schools. You don't have to be uh, in Britain uh, to use it. Uh, you, what you do is you just go here, you register, and then you can download film guides. They have really, really excellent film guides. Film guides aren't specifically for people learning English as a foreign language, but they can certainly be adapted. Um, we've got an example here. Uh, what we've got is we've got a short description of what the film is about, and then we've got really, really interesting discussion questions. Um, so th these can be, there are hundreds and hundreds of films, they're very, very nice. So I'd recommend uh, going there, filmclub.com. Um, the best films, film guides that I know of, but not again, not for language uh, teaching, but they can be adapted, uh, is at filmeducation.com. Now, now, these are really, really excellent uh, film, film guides. Um, and uh, they look at the, uh, the, 
visual literacy, they develop visual literacy and film literacy. Um, now, this organization no longer is, exists, but the, 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 the website still exists. You can still download hundreds of, of, of uh, free film guides, and they can certainly be adapted for uh, English as a foreign language. Um, the new organization uh, of the British Film Institute, the Film Education No Longer Exists, is the Film space that's the filmspace.com you can go there they've got really excellent film guides there hundreds and hundreds of film guides different types of film so they're, they're very very good so I recommend if you're going to show whole films to work on the vocabulary on expressions beforehand uh, otherwise I think it can get a frustrating other experience I think, I think we shouldn't underestimate the difficulty of, of understanding um, uh, film and it can be frustrating experience of students having done work on, on the expressions on the vocabulary beforehand. Um, film circles uh, is an activity that I've been recently. It's a structured and scaffolded activity, and in this activity, um, you divide the, the class into groups of five, and each student is assigned a particular role, um, and um, the students have to have their role. And they have to research their role. They have to go away, research their role, watch the film, come back, report back on what they've uh, found out about this. So, for example, you have the, the wordsmith, the wordsmith who look film, and difficult words and expressions and to other members of the group. The music lover is the person who looks at the soundtrack, uh, finds out information about the, the music in the film, perhaps downloads the lyrics and creates activities for other members of the group. The director is the person who leads the discussion. Um, so it's a very nice activity. Um, and also it's a generic activity which saves time for the teacher because to write your own film guides, to write your own film activities is very, very time consuming. So you want sort of generic activities which, which can be gentle on the teacher and make students do all the work. Uh, this activity generates a, a lot of discussion, a lot of debate. Students, as I say, they research their role, they report back, generates a lot of discussion, a lot of debate. Um, and they get a lot of information about the film. The next film that they watch, they change their role, so they have a different role. Uh, the activity also develops um, learner autonomy uh, because students have to take responsibility for their own learning. If they don't do their activity, they let down all the members of the group, so they tend to do this. Um, it's quite a popular activity. It's very, very easy to administer. Uh, we're going to look now at using um, uh, film clips. Um, now, I think film clips, using film clips is in the classroom is more, making more optimal use of, of, of class time. Um, there isn't the information overload that we have which on the whole film. Also, this, the short film clips can be shown several times as students engage with the material on a more meaningful level. Um, what I would recommend again is that you, to write your own film activities, and that fine, but very, very time consuming. Um, what I would suggest is that you find generic activities which can be used with any, virtually any film um, and where students are doing all the work. Work in the sense of that they're speaking a lot um, and they're communicating a lot. Now, what we've got here is uh, an alliteration: the four S's and, and the three C's. And this is an alliteration. I just give it to the students; they write it down. And what they do is with this alliteration, with like any film clip, with which film clip should say the setting. Where does it take place? Is it inside? Is it outside? They have to take notes on this. Um, if it's inside, what type of home is it? Uh, is it a flat? Describe everything you can see inside the home, all the objects, the story. What story does the clip tell? What happened before? What happened after? What's going to happen? What happened after? Um, it could be the music, the sound effects. Uh, it can also be the tone of voice, symbolism. Films are f full of symbolism. Students have to spot the symbolism in the, in the clip. We have the three C's. The students uh, talk about the camera. So here, a little bit, we, used to, we introduced the meta language of without getting very complicated, but talking about whether, it would, whether the camera zooms in, whether it pans, if it's a close-up, a long shot. As, a, as I say, without getting very technical, just a little bit of the meta language of film, the color, um, how the colors make you feel, the colors dark, are they light, are the colors associated with a particular character? 
beliefs related to the colours and also the characters. Um, write down about the characters. So they just watch the clip, they've got alliteration, they make notes and they compare. It generates an awful lot of discussion um, and students come up with really, really interesting things and they're quite good at interpreting films and uh, again it's quite motivating for them and it's minimal preparation for the teacher which is which is very important. Um, um, American Beauty, I'm, I'm not going to show this clip here now as, as, as um, um, the, the platform doesn't support videos. We'll be watching some videos in a minute but I'm just going to skip this one here. Um, Another generic activity is a Venn diagram. Activity can be used with virtually uh, any film clip which has interaction between uh, two or more characters. And you have the Venn diagram in one, the first circle. You ask students to write down adjectives to describe one of the characters or nouns to describe one of the characters. It could be the personality, it could be physically. Uh, the second one, you write them at the name of the second character, uh, the name of the second character. Uh, and um, in the middle, you write down anything which they have in common, uh, any of the things that they have in common. So again, this is minimal preparation for the teacher. The students are doing all the work. It generates a lot of vocabulary, a lot of discussion. Um, another generic activity is to give, st to give students a template. This is for physical description, um, so you have the name of the character, they write down the name of the character, or two characters or three, and they can compare the characters. What we hear, have here is a physical description, so we have uh, the age, the height, the build, arms and legs, the posture, the face, the skin, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the hair, their expression, and students watch the clip, or this can be used with a whole film as well. Um, that they, they make uh, notes about this and then they can compare the two adjectives afterwards. Again, it generates a lot of discussion um, and a lot of vocabulary. And there are activities that we can use. Um, we can show the film with, with no sound and the students uh, have, to, have to say what, what the characters are saying, that they write the script, they write the script themselves, uh, give them time to write the scripts, and then you, you, they, they can come up to come to the front 